Yesterday we began our lesson by acknowledging the fact that we live in a world of gross immorality. And we started answering the question, well, what can the church do during this time? What can we do to be of assistance to those in the world around us who are struggling with these immoral sins that are taking place? Well, first we talked about the fact that the church can avoid the danger of conformity. We must be different from the world. But also, we need to maintain our purity. We need to be an example to those who are in the world of the goodness and the kindness and the mercy of God. But today we're going to pick up our lesson by looking at the fact that the church can take a firm stand against all evil. The church of our Lord in every community should be known for its stand against everything from alcohol to pornography to sexual permissiveness, abortion, homosexuality, every other form of vice that is there. The church everywhere should be known for its strong stand against divorce and remarriage. Such a stand should be manifested in the proper discipline of immoral members. And this strong posture of the church should be reflected from the pulpit and perhaps most effectively from the personal lives of its members. And let us never forget that James says in James 1 and verse 27 that pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. If we are going to have a positive impact on the world around us, then we must stand upon the promises of God. We cannot compromise whenever it comes to sin. But fourth, the church must continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. This, in the final analysis, is the only remedy for the immorality that we find in the world, and that includes preaching through personal influence. That means by the way that we live before the world. This, in fact, may be the most effective way to preach Christianity. Often as people's allegiance is changed from Satan to Christ, we see that the moral climate of society changes. And while we may sometimes think that this is a hopeless task, we can have the confidence of knowing that it is not. The gospel is still the power of God unto salvation, as Paul says in Romans 1 and verse 16. And if we will teach it, preach it, and live it, then it will be used of the Lord to save others. The church at Corinth was composed of people who had formerly led very immoral lives. In describing their conversion, Paul said, Know ye not that the, right, uh, that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with men, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 through 11. If the Word of God could have that kind of corrective effect upon the perverted society of ancient Corinth, it can have the same kind of effect upon the immoral society of our day. Remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews 13, 8. And we have the weapon with which to wage the battle, that is, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, Ephesians six seventeen. Paul wrote, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 5. Friends, this is our challenge. The Lamb shall overcome. He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and are faithful. Revelation 17 and verse 14. Friends, we want to thank you for joining us for our program today. 
please consider these things that we have discussed and have a blessed day.